In this video, you will learn what a forward contract is and how it's used by businesses and asset managers to manage risk and to budget with more certainty. A forward contract is a derivative. Derivatives are financial instruments that derive their value from the value of an underlying asset. They can be divided into two broad categories, forward commitments and contingent claims. Forwards, futures and swaps are forward commitments while options and credit default swaps are contingent claims. The difference between the two is that forward commitments obligate the two parties to perform a certain transaction in the future. Instead, contingent claims give you the right, but not the obligation, to engage in the future in a certain transaction. A forward contract is, well, a contract where two parties decide to exchange something, say silver, for example not today but in the future, say in six months. The price though at which they will exchange the commodity is fixed today. That is called the forward price. There is not an exchange of money today when the contract is signed but there is the creation of a commitment for both parties so at the delivery date they both must do their bit which is either buying or selling the commodity at the agreed price. As an example imagine that we are the CFO of Pandora. Pandora is a Danish company, they make jewellery, like this, you might have seen them around. To create bracelets and stuff, they must buy raw material, mainly silver. So we work for Pandora and we start to realise that we are running out of raw materials. We know that in about six months time we'll have to stock up again and start to feel anxious about it because we don't know where the price of silver is going. If the price of silver goes up by a lot, then our costs go up by a lot and that reduces our profits. If you check their latest financial statements, you will see that they mention explicitly commodity risk as being one of the main risks to their business model. So what they do is hedging 70% of commodity acquisitions and they do that with forwards. So we as Pandora enter as the long party into a forward contract, which specifies the price at which we will buy silver, the delivery date, the amount of units, the location of delivery, etc, etc. It might look something like this. Buy 600 ounces of silver on the 12th of October 2021 at $26.2 per ounce. The buyer of the forward, so the long side of the trade, is also the buyer of the commodity on the delivery date. The seller instead is the party who commits to let go of the commodity on the delivery date in exchange for the agreed price. So the forward is a commitment for both for the buyer to actually buy the commodity and for the seller to let it go in exchange for the agreed price. The value of the forward, like any derivative, depends on the value of the underlying asset, which is silver in our case. If at the delivery date, the price of silver is higher than 26.2, which is the forward price, we'll feel like a genius, right? We are able to buy a 26.2, something that is worth 30, for example, and make a profit of around four dollars per ounce. If it happens instead that the price of silver collapses, say to twelve dollars, then we will have lost because we are paying twenty six point two dollars, something that we could get for fourteen dollars cheaper from the market. On the short side of the trade, payoffs are mirrored. Our counterparty committed to sell us silver, so they want prices to be very, very low on the delivery date. If prices actually go to $12 an ounce, they will be selling us something worth 12 for 26.2, making a profit of 14 on each ounce they sell to us. But if the price of silver is above the forward price, say at 30, like in the previous example, they will be selling as a valuable commodity below market value, which is never fun. Forward contracts are essentially a zero-sum game. Our losses will be somebody else's gains and vice versa. There will always be a winner and a loser, unless on the delivery date S is exactly equal to the forward price, in which case both parties are neutral. But this is a rare event. Where does the forward price come from? How to calculate it? Well, the forward price is very easy to calculate and it's equal to the price today of the underlying asset that is also called the spot price, capitalized at a factor that includes the risk-free rate and any other cost associated with ownership of the underlying asset. In case of commodities, this is usually storage cost. This factor has to be elevated to the power of capital T, which is the delivery date, in our example, six months. 
So for example, if we know that the spot price of silver today is 26.12 and we also know that the risk-free rate is equal to 0.06% for a one-year duration and the storage cost for one year is equal to 0.5%, then we can plug all these numbers in the formula, remembering that we need to express capital T as a percentage of the year because we have yearly rates, then this will give us a forward price of 26.193, which we can approximate with the 26.2 that we have used in our example throughout. So let's see the main purposes of forward contracts. The main purpose is risk management or hedging. As a business, Pandora is exposed to silver prices, so they enter into forwards to lock the price today. This allows them to chill and budget for other costs with more certainty. The same happens with airlines. They will want to buy forwards on oil, gasoline to hedge their cost of fuels. In asset management, which is the industry I work in, we use forwards to hedge currency risk on foreign investments. That's because forex changes all the time and it can reduce the value of our overseas position. So we lock into the exchange rate between the pound and the dollar so we don't get surprises and we don't have to worry anymore about currency fluctuations. In the next video, we'll have a look at futures, what they are, how they are used, what are the similarities and the differences with forwards. I thank you so much for watching this far and I'll see you next week.